I'm getting... Oh, whoops, I'm going to end up doing a copyright infringement. <laughs> but I am getting closer to my home. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. I'm Marion, the inappropriate artist. It's wonderful to see you guys today. Glad you could join me. Um, so for a little bit of a catch up on what's going on, last week I mentioned that I'd be going to consignment shop this week. Uh, Wednesday was my appointment. Unfortunately, it snowed that day. I did make the drive anyway. No one called me to say there was a cancellation. So I got there. Place wasn't open. Nobody in sight. Called and left a message. Unfortunately, nobody ever called me back even later in the day to let me know what was going on. So on Thursday, I did a little more investigating and ended up running to a place up in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Um, so it was a bit more of a travel for me, but um, I think it worked out well. So twofold. First being, um, they took a lot more of the things than I expected they would. There were definitely some items that I hoped they were going to take that they didn't. That's the way it goes in consignment. Um, but we'll see what happens with that. I know that a few items that I had for sale before I could even get to the consignment shop, another person purchased them. So that was fabulous. And that's $60 I can put in my savings for the van. Um, and every penny counts. I mean, literally every penny. This is how I save, right? <laughs> um, every bit of change I find, get, receive, whatever goes in the can, goes in the savings. Um, everything. This is this is certainly my life's goal. So, for this year, moment, whatever, I want this van. I want to have this experience, um, however long it lasts for me. So, that being said. So uh, Thursday was consignment day, and I ran around um, so much in that morning, and on the way up there, driving on the highway, um, it occurred to me that a dear friend, whom I used to work with, lived up there, and I messaged her, telling her what I was going to be doing. Um, and after I got out of my consignment appointment, she had messaged me saying that she was going to be there for lunch. So we ended up meeting down the street and having a wonderful lunch and continuing it on into the afternoon. So I didn't get any filming done on Thursday, which is what I had hoped to do. But for me, that interruption was the best interruption I could have had. It's such a gift to be able to get together with a good friend um, and share what's going on in our lives. So we had a wonderful afternoon. And then Friday, um, I went and dropped off my guitar. Yes, not my six string, my first guitar, which is a 12 string Yamaha. I had had it for sale online for a few months now and nobody's been even touching it. And mostly I think because guitars need to be played in order for you to want to know whether or not it's something you want. Um, and so I brought it down to the local guitar shop. We'll see what he offers me for it after he's had an opportunity to really play it and look it over. Um, and uh, it'll be better than nothing. And the guitar hopefully will end up with somebody um, who will get just as much joy out of it as I did. It was such a great gift to be able to purchase it all those years ago. I was about to drive across the country. I just learned how to play guitar. And one of the bands I used to go see all the time. A shout out to Mark Berardo and Chris Berardo and the Desperados, right? Um, and Mark said it was a shame that I would be going all the way across the country without a guitar, and he happened to have this guitar, and so I bought it from him um, and had a little work done to it because the, the strings were, the action was way too high for me, um, and I couldn't push the strings down at all. So he had the action, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I took the guitar to a place called Connecticut Music in Stanford. Don't know if it's still there or not. Those guys were awesome. Um, and they lowered the action for me and pressed the neck, did a little bit of work on it so that it would be a much better instrument, an easier instrument for me to play. Um, and it was perfect. Um, and still is. Unfortunately, my hands can no longer hang on to that fat neck 
and push the strings down at the same time. So uh, it was definitely time for me to let go of it. Um, I still have my Alvarez, even though she's got cracks in her and difficulties, it's just easier for me to play that guitar. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did on Friday. Um, and met also with another friend. But you know, it, it for me, this process, these last few days, they may have felt a little deflating at first. So at first I was going around and kind of hoping that it was, I was gonna get, you know, good news about these things. And for some I did, and for others I didn't. Um, and especially for the guitar, that's a hard one. Um, it was valuable to me. So sometimes when you have to accept a lot less for something, um, it feels somehow um, a little bit like an insult. Why? Well, maybe because I put so much energy into that guitar, right? I put all that love. I had that amazing experience with it. Um, and that is where the value lied, right? That's where it was. So when I went to sell it, it's really hard to detach that emotional value. Um, to realize that really what you have is just a guitar um, and not the greatest guitar either you know I mean it's a I mean it is a good guitar it's a Yamaha it's an older Yamaha so built I think in the 80s early 80s possibly maybe even late 70s I'm not sure anyway that would maybe be information Mark could provide so I uh, that was hard for me that was hard for me um, knowing that it's going to really be um, a lower amount than I had hoped to get for it because it's going to be less than I paid for it um, all those years ago. But it is what it is, right? Um, every little bit that I can put together toward this van is more than I had before. So I am grateful. Um, and today it's a little gloomy out. It's raining. It's kind of misty and it's actually kind of a little bit warm um and it's gonna go up i guess into the 50s today and stay rainy um but as i look out one of the things i love about a rainy day is the freaking light in it's glowing in this light and it is so beautiful um just seeing how it stretches up these trees in front of me um i would film it however Whenever I try to shoot out this window, that sounds wrong, but every time I try to shoot out this window, I end up with screen obstruction, right? Because there's screens in this window. So I'm not going to bother with that right now. Maybe someday I'll show you those lichen-covered trees out front and rocks because it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so this morning I had a beautiful meditation. It made me feel so energized and ready for this day um, and just a little moving meditation short simple nothing major I never need more than 10 to 15 minutes um, I will sit quietly for longer than that uh, but as far as doing a designated meditation practice I usually only last for about 10 minutes um, I'm too antsy and that's why I like these moving meditations moving meditations are really great for me so I download it off of audible right I love audible it's fantastic for someone who's dyslexic like me it takes so much of the frustration out of trying to read something brilliant right I for instance uh, I'll digress just for a moment um, I always wanted to read Dickens right but every time I sat down to do it, I would read like the same paragraph three different times and three different times it would say three different things. And the frustration that came from that, not knowing what I was reading was correct or not and being totally humiliated by the prospect of asking someone for help um, that, um, you know, at the time when I was realizing this, um, it just, I couldn't go through that. It was too embarrassing. I thought, how can, how can I start asking people for help in my 30s for this stuff, right? Um, but you know what? I'm an audible learner. 
I'm a freaking great audible learner, by the way. So because of that, and because of this audiographic memory that I have that also works with music and lyrics and things like that, and um, situations, uh, conversations, um, I absorb so much information because of that. And sometimes it's hard for me to remember where I got the information from. So I will say often, don't hold me to this, but this is what I heard. Let's look it up. Let's find out if this is correct or not, right? Um, which is usually how I progress. So now I'll get back to uh, the moving meditation and, um, and audible and being able to listen to these books um, and listen to a meditation that helps me gain some focus, uh, being that that is one of the most difficult things for me to do is to give my focus for that long in a quiet way. Uh, as many people who know me know, um, I love to talk. Um, mostly because that's my brain is going so fast. There's so much there and I want to share it. Um, and so it comes out very quickly sometimes and sometimes very scattered. Um, and most of the time, I can stop, redirect the order in my head uh, because things do jump ahead and then I end up behind, right? So I have to redirect the order, do a little shuffling, and take a deep breath and come back down to the beginning and move back up the list again to find the order. And sometimes that takes me time. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I can do it quickly. Um, but either way, it's just my process and it's how it works for me. Um, I am hoping that next week, oh, so yesterday, oh, one of the other things I did yesterday, um, I went to see my mechanic, who is the person I'm going to be purchasing my van from, and we had a good little mini conversation um, about the things that um, I would like to achieve with the van. His big concern is gas mileage. Well, every single person I've talked to or messaged to or listened to about van life always talks about the fact that you're going to only have, you know, maybe 10 to 14 miles a gallon, miles per gallon when you build out your van because of the weight. Um, and so that's really not um, something that is going to halt me because my, my plan, you know, best laid plans, right? But my plan is to move slowly. So uh, spend time in a town, make a little bit of money, enough to get to the next town so that I am not stretching myself or um, putting too much stress on the vehicle and, and trying to push it. Um, although my first leg of the journey is going to be a push, right? Because I want to get south first. But other than that first leg, um, it is definitely going to be me creeping along and enjoying the creep and enjoying spending time in each spot that I end up in. Um, and I invite those of you along the way as I share where I am and what I'm doing. If you happen to be in the next town and uh, you want to meet up, that'd be awesome. Or if you have a driveway for me to park in, I'll say thank you. Um, it, you know, things like that. Uh, or just want to get together and have a cup of coffee. Fabulous. Uh, so this is what I invite uh, from you. And uh, I look forward to it. Uh, but yeah, yesterday I got to talk to the mechanic and he wants to make sure that everything's in good working condition. One of the reasons I want to buy it from him is because this is a person I've known for over 20 years uh, and I know he actually cares about my safety um, and that matters to me. Uh, and buying from a total stranger scares the crap out of me. Um, in my life, unfortunately, I because I tend to want to Listen, I want to trust that people are being honest with me. I don't like assuming people are lying to me. And when I have to buy things from strangers, I have to think that way. I have to think in terms of what are they hiding? What are they not telling me about this vehicle or this item or whatever? I didn't want to go through that for this particular process. Um, because I want to feel secure in what I end up in. And yes, this van is definitely has rust issues. Um, but those are things that can be 
um, at least halted for a period of time, worked on, sealed up. I don't need this to be a man, you know, like the, the most beautiful mansion in the world, right? Um, this is my first van. And maybe I'm not even going to like this van life, right? So why would I go and spend outrageous amounts of money on something that I'm not even sure I'm going to enjoy? Uh, so that being said, the budget for this is as low as I can get it. I'm hoping to only spend about two grand on the van um, itself. I, I have a hammock and uh, maybe put up some lag bolts. I have plastic bins to fill it with. I have a uh, an old table here that I have that's kind of narrow that I could probably like screw into the wall or create brackets for it to keep it steady from moving around. At least I would have a countertop and underneath it I can slide my little oversized nightstand, which is two drawers and that also can be bolted down, right? So these things I have will make do for the time being. They'll give me some structure and storage uh, for the time being. I, I believe in living in a space and allowing myself to see what I need and add to it as time progresses. I don't feel the need to move into something completely finished. Why? I may not need half that stuff. You know, I don't know that I need an indoor shower and an indoor toilet yet. I may be fine using truck stops and others' generosity and public restrooms or digging a hole in the wild, you know, um, like I would do camping or hiking. So these are things that don't scare me and they don't bother me. Um, the idea of spending, you know, thousands of dollars for a hot water system and... Um, you know, the nature's head compostable toilet, totally want one someday. If this is going to be my lifestyle, yes. Cannot spend a thousand dollars right now <laughs> for this toilet. So you know what? A bucket and a bag and some sawdust works just fine for me. Um, I have no problems with that. Um, that's just business, right? So there's the bathroom and the shower issues that people keep asking me about. Um, another thing people keep asking me about is safety. So I have communicated with many solo female van lifers. Uh, and all of them say exactly the same thing. If you're in an apartment and someone is trying to break into your apartment and you dial 911, you are trapped in that apartment until 911 gets there and that person may break in and God only knows what could happen. In a van, I grab my keys, I put them in the ignition, I go. I can leave any situation that makes me feel in the slightest uncomfortable. So I find that to be an even safer way of living than anything else because I'm 47 years old, I am not a child. I know how to look up neighborhoods and see where where the safe areas are and the non-safe areas are and to decide that, you know, I don't want to put myself maybe in a really wealthy neighborhood because those people are going to notice a van and say, oh, my God, what's that van doing there? Or, you know, putting myself in a really um, unsafe area and um, knowing that I could be broken into at any time. So, you know, looking around and just seeing where the areas are where you can park and be unnoticed um, and knowing that, you know, you're never staying in the same place twice on purpose uh, for multiple reasons, but mostly because you do not want to abuse this privilege, right? Um, I don't want to abuse this privilege. So the idea of moving around and keeping myself going from spot to spot works great. And if someone invites me to stay on their property for a couple of days, yay, thank you. I'm so grateful. Um and that gives me the opportunity to sit back, relax, and not worry about moving around. Um, but, you know, I kind of look forward to that. I've always been a person who struggles with sticking to one thing for too long. I get bored. Once I get to know an area, to me, it's just a repeat of the same thing over and over like a broken record. So I like to move on. 
um, and see new things. That's why this life is so desirable to me. Um, so this is uh, what's been happening. These are the questions I've received over the last week uh, from people whom I've been talking to, mostly not from comments yet, although please leave your comments below, ask questions, um, share your story if you are someone who is already experiencing this life and um, you want to share your story with others to encourage them. Um, I am someone who has no fear blocking haters. So if someone starts getting incredibly aggressive on my page, I'm going to block them. I don't need that in my life. If there's one thing I've learned, I do not have to accept verbal abuse from anyone. Um, I can change my location and my situation. So I will do that. Um, so don't fear. I'm not going to allow people to um, badger and harm others on my page. Um, that being said, please leave your comments, suggestions, questions, anything. I'd love to communicate with you. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, the notifications bell, all that stuff. Um, and, you know, so my channel is growing slowly but surely. Two weeks, I have 15 subscribers. Yay, I'm so happy. Um, and that's awesome. And I hope to get a few more. So let's keep it going, and uh, I will keep you posted. Have a wonderful, beautiful weekend, everybody, and the rest of the week I'll, I'll be uh, posting a video next week. Take care. Blessings to all.